Well, that is probably the brightest base I've ever seen in Dawn of War 2, but we're on Imperial Plaza. Not a map that I cover very often, but we did get a replay sent in. And I don't remember who sent it in either. It could have been Seraph or it could have been a Versa Assassin, also known as Sergeant Smith, I believe. Could have been neither of them, because they both sent in replays. We've got the Apothecary versus the Aversa Assassin. I was actually hoping for an auto Malleus Mirror, but I don't know if you guys would have been so interested in that, so... Eh. Tell me, would you prefer to see an auto Malleus Mirror? Or this Space Marine versus Auto Malleus? Either way, this is what you got now. So let's see how it turns out. Now this map is pretty massive. So the scout squads with their extra movement speed should have a little bit of an advantage here. Yeah, you did actually see that. Look, so check out the capping here. We're at like coming into half now. And you see that the scouts are at three quarters. And that's just the 6.5 speed. They obviously got to this point, so capping it sooner. And I was going to say you could keep stacking that buff. They would then get to this point and start capping it sooner. But, well, Seraph's micro is not good enough, so he doesn't. Now, I don't know if the Apothecary seen the Aversa Assassin down bottom here. Both the heroes did go bottom, but of course the Aversa Assassin would be able to 1v1 on Apo. So the Apothecary backed off, joined his tactical space marines. And remember, that's generally a pretty good tactic in the early game. Blobbing your hero and your tactical marines. It's really good, it makes them very effective. Combined, they can often even take on free squads that are unupgraded. You know, just think Slugger Boys plus two Shoot Boys, it is possible. Now, it was a bit weird that the Strike Squad there chose to just sit there and eat the Kraken rounds. So that, you know, they, they got the cat, but then they were forced off and nothing really happened. When the Strike Squad, you know, they should be able to 1v1 the attacks quite easily. Even with the Apo nearby, I think the Strike Squad should have a very good engagement against the tax. In fact, probably can just force off the tax in spite of the Apo. So, I don't like that play from Sergeant Smith. Of course, the... Scouts now move in and take that VP. The Aversa Assassin is getting poked down here by these scouts. And actually, decent macro there from Seraph not to get caught in the melee charge of the Aversa Assassin. Because these guys are squishy, and the bolt pistol from that EA will actually kill these models quite fast. So we'll see here what's going to happen. A little bit of dribbling around there. It's got to be close to the melee charge, that. And we're getting some, some pistol shots, but no melee charge, but there you go. You should get it now. Come on, Aversa Assassin, what are you doing? There you go, finally. He gets the melee charge, and now this guy's going to die to bolt pistol shots. Oh, that chainsaw. Or just sword. Is it even a chainsaw? What is this? What is this thing? Oh, it is It is a chainsaw. It's kind of a weird-looking chainsaw. But it is a chainsaw. Wow. God, that was close. Did you Psycon as well there for the extra damage? Get very close to killing that airport, but not quite. These guys are kind of just playing a mirror right now. Well, apart from the fact that the Versa Assassin doesn't have a second basic squad, you know, only running one IST, not the two scouts that we use the Seraph has. And, you know, that could bite him in the arse, actually. I feel like having the two IST could be very helpful both to focus down the airport but also to control any shotgun scouts, which can definitely help the ASM win these melee engagements. Now, by default, the ASM are just inferior to the Interceptors. You see they've got the same HP, but Interceptors do more damage. Interceptors have the HP of ASM, but do the damage of Raptors. The downside is that they jump in Tier 1, whilst you can use it more often because of all the energy regen that Automalias have, it, it doesn't have an effect, so, it, you know. If the ASM get the jump on the Interceptors, that will help them probably win the fight, I would imagine, because of the knockback. But if they just sort of walk into one another, then Interceptors will, will win. But of course, that's why when you're playing SM, you've got your APO, basically, well, less so the Tech Marine, but certainly the Apothecary and Force Commander can support the ASM very well in that fight. And it'll be interesting to see if we're going to be seeing any sort of support tools in that regard, Purification Rites feels like a no-brainer here. You've got two melee squads to fight from the Grey Knights. So you just start chaining your knockback. ASM jump, knock over. Shotgun Blast, knock over. Purification Rites, knock over. And then if we see a lot of upgrades on the Aversary Assassin, which actually we are right now, 
you can always go for the bolter and just stun him and focus fire him with attacks from a distance. But Sanguine isn't bad either, especially when there's only one IST, there's not going to be a lot of range DPS, so a Sanguine Apothecary could put in a lot of work. We're going to see one Strike Squad model getting bled there, oh beautiful heal in the scouts just before they were going to lose a model. Now the Aversa Assassin is in really way too deep, I assume he uses Neurotoxin Pistol on the scout squads, they're the only ones that seem to have lost a significant amount of health negated by that heal and now the interceptors are going to be teleporting in but man i don't know they're teleporting in kind of really late we could see a sanctify global and another teleport fall to wipe the scout but we don't it's too risky there is a potential for a grenade and retreat path or oh, let's see how this grenade does and it is not the best grenade at least it did hit something killing a couple of ist there now let's have a look at the gen farms these guys really are just mirroring one another what the hell Look at this, they've both chosen to split their farms and now Seraph is opting for the fourth generator here. Yeah, it is a big map and definitely is very, very strong for Tyranids and less so for Space Marines, but actually, yeah, it probably is a really good Space Marine. I'm just thinking about it, you can control all the top of your scouts and then the distance to this bottom VP from the base, not that big, so you just keep sending tacks down here and it can be pretty brutal. I've not really seen Seraph doing that much. It's interesting, there's not really been much focus on the bottom of the map at all. We've just got this constant brawling in the mid. And right now, do we have purification rights? We do not, so yeah, those, those sacks have to get out of there. Now the stress squad is still quite healthy as well, but so the ASM. Looks like they're focusing on the apothecary right now. Just bullying him in the corner. Oh, and the neurotoxin pistol there are gonna come out, and that is a unexpected spike of damage for Seraph there and it ends up making him lose his apothecary. I mean he should have seen that coming given that he knows he's got this war gear and he also sees that the Aversa Assassin is quite high in HP but you can see here just the power of the Grey Knights there. The Interceptors had less HP from the very start of this engagement. But they're saying in it. Psycon. Extra damage there on the Aversa Assassin. An attempted push Oh my god, the grenade nearly killed the ASM, but it did its job there, it deterred the interceptors from trying to finish off that kill and the ASM will survive. I think it was very weird how Seraph took that fight anyway, as soon as the Apothecary had to retreat, well, died, I think um, the ASM should go straight out of there, not jumping forward and into the fight even further. So interceptors are now going to go top. Aversa Assassin is really struggling right now with map control, which is... Probably because he didn't go for a fourth squad, right? You know, you're meant to be better at the combat, but scouts are faster than you. The enemy has two scouts, and then tax cap at 50% extra cap, uh, cap speed, so of course a Versa Assassin is going to be struggling with the map control. He's doing what he can. Scouts down here from Seraph attempting to do a bit of a gem bash. Just started it, now these guys can finish it. But of course it is a split farm, so it's not devastating. Versa Assassin is tier 2 as well, so is Seraph. They really are mirroring one another here, they seem to have got to tier 2 at the same time. To be honest, I would just be retreating the um, the interceptors here. I don't think... I think that the likelihood of the strike squads putting in anything meaningful over here is quite slim. Now, as it happens, it looks like the forces is going to the mid instead, but you've already had the central natural VP. Just get the interceptors out of there, because they shouldn't be fighting right now. They're way too low HP. Don't tell me he's going to send these interceptors in. I wouldn't do it. He's waiting for the Justy Car, which makes sense. And maybe he's not. He's just running in. Here with the Justy Car getting the knockback on the ASM, it could be potentially quite brutal for the ASM. Okay, fair enough. And he gets both his Grey Knight Tier 2 leaders now. So these guys are going to be really spooky in melee. Oh, and then the Neurotoxin as well, and the Interceptor's jumping in once again. Looks like the Interceptor's kind of fucked up that attack. Gonna go for the third jump. A little bit too short on the jump. I, I'm pretty sure they could have jumped a bit further there. Potential for a retreat grenade. That is what happens when you very riskily jump in there with your Interceptors. But now it looks like Seraph's fucked this up. I don't know why he stopped. Okay, he gets one model. Yeah, I don't know why he hesitated. I guess he just he wasn't quick enough. So Strike Squad and Aversa Assassin going to be doing a bit of a gem bash here. No other upgrades yet for the Aversa Assassin. The, the Executioner Pistol is really nice for controlling the scouts and the airport. I mean, I guess it will be handy against the Librarian too, but... 
as far as the actual melee brawls, it doesn't scale very, very well at all. So we'll see. I mean, right now, obviously, the April with his power racks here is going to be able to beat up the Aversa Assassin 1v1. Which is not ideal for your Aversa Assassin. You know, you don't really want that. What is our Odomalius player going to be opting for? Apparently, the Grey Knight Librarian. I find this hilarious. You know, the Space Marine goes Librarian. What's the Odomalius going to do? He's going to get a Librarian. Of course he is. I mean, it makes sense. There's... They're basically just having these massive melee brawls, and the Terminator Librarian's really good melee superiority. He's got that Sanctuary ability by default, creates this bubble around him which does ability knockback, meaning it'll even knock over Terminators, things like Chaos Lords. And even though that's mostly used to protect your ranged units, like you put it on your setup teams, to protect from jump squads and stuff, it's still good against melee, it still disrupts the enemy, it doesn't knock your units over. Knockback always helps you in melee fights, because units that are on their ass are units that aren't doing damage. And then you can upgrade him, then you get the Might of the Titan ability, it comes with this Codicum Eternum ability upgrade. And that gives... it gives AoE melee skill. I believe it also gives damage resistance in an AoE. It's a toggle ability. Oh, here we go, and now we've got the Neuro Gauntlet as well. Serious DPS coming out. Who's that? The Librarian? The Librarian's probably going to get killed right now by the Aversa Assassin, and indeed the Librarian does go down. Librarian, not quite as good for Space Marines as the Auto Malleus one in terms of melee combat, yet nonetheless you often see it from the Space Marine player in this matchup because it's... Going for a vehicle first thing in tier 2 is always quite scary against Auto Malleus because they can always just counter it by going for a last cannon Rhino. So typically you go for the Librarian, but then typically you would follow up with Plasma, and if they had a lot of IST with upgrades, then you can get Stern Guard, and you can get Devastators once you got the Librarian, because of course you can remove their setup time, with Veil of Time. But Seraph hasn't done this. Seraph has just skipped straight to tier 3, which is... Slightly more permissible, given that I've just noticed the VPs are considerably in his favour, with over 400 VPs for Seraph. But Aversa Assassin still has that 50 VPs, now onto a triple cap. Of course, his combat forces right now are significantly stronger. We also see the Cybernetic Enhancement upgrade now coming out. So it gives him that rapid reflexibility, which you activate it before you use abilities, and the cooldowns will be halved. So... As you're running into a fight, you can activate that ability, and then when you activate Psycon, you can use Psycon again twice as fast. It also heals you 120 seconds over 10 seconds or something. 120 seconds. You know what I mean. 120 HP over 10 seconds. So that's all he was using for then, just to heal up his Aversa Assassin in between the fights. So he does get the full gem bash off. Now he's going to get out of here with no model losses. But of course, Seraph still has this gen farm down bottom. Let's see how the scouts can handle this interceptor squad right now. Interceptors not having their just car, that's one less bolter to do damage. Oh, an attempt there at the grenade plus shotgun blast combo. Not gonna work, unfortunately, for Seraph. But the IST are on route anyway, they will definitely route the scout squad. The Terminator Librarian infiltrating himself with shrouding. Appearing out of nowhere and smiting some scouts. Now I was going to say the ASM should be winning this fight against the Interceptors since they lack their Sergeant, but with the Granite Librarian around, this could be a lot more of a tricky fight. Does he have Might of the Titan? He's not using it if he does. Oh, I think he is now, because we've got the yellow buff circles. So he must be. Is he draining? Now maybe he's cancelled it? I don't know. No. Anyway, the VPs are crazy low right now. Strike Squad gonna get onto the mid. We've got the Interceptors who have decapped the bottom, but it's still bleeding. 17 VPs and 60 VPs. What is Aversa Assassin doing? Yeah, gotta send his hero over to the top. He's gonna get the mid. And... Man. This APO is going to cap this before the decap, maybe. It does take longer to cap a point than decap a point for these reasons. Now it looks like 
the Averse Assassin will get the decap. So there's, he's going to live on 8 VPs, but wow, is this incredibly close. Very interesting that he's not purchasing his uh, Justicar again for his Interceptors. Obviously, he's going to free right now himself. I mean... He must know that his opponent's tier 3. He's literally seen nothing in tier 2 bar a Librarian, which didn't even get any upgrades. So... He must know. Bit of a merciless strike here. Vanguard veterans these are now, not just ASM. So these actually are substantially better than ASM at dealing with Grey Knights, because all of these guys do power melee damage. So they all get a nice 30% extra damage, and, and I think just their DPS is, is way higher, even without the power melee. So basically like flying corn marines, these guys. So they will brutalize the strike squad and the interceptors, because both of these only do normal melee damage, except for the just cards, which are power melee. What's the play? What is Seraph going tier 3 for? Is he actually getting a land raider? Is he? That, is that seriously what is going on right now? Are we witnessing a tier three tech into a land raider? We we. <laughs> oh my god, the memes! This guy loves his memes. He really does. What on earth? But he's got a bottom of Razorback to be contending with right now. It's not going to be the easiest thing to deal with. No AV obviously on the field right now, he sacrifices the Melter Bomb by opting for the Vanguard Veterans as well. Landerator Redeemer of course, very tanky, very powerful, but it doesn't counter a Vodimer Razorback you see right here actually. The DPS from the Vodimer Razorback is actually helping the Strike Squad win that fight quite convincingly. Also check out the fact that the Strike Squad are 2150 HP, and in fact the Vanguard Veterans are going to be wiped. 2150 HP on the Strike Squad because they get a big buff to their HP with their Justica and of course they're level 3. So they actually had more HP there than the Vanguard Veterans. Of course they would lose the 1v1 nonetheless, but with all the DPS coming out the bottom of Razorback, that wasn't the case. And as it stands right now, I'm actually a little bit concerned for Seraph. I don't know how he's going to deal with this bottom of Razorback. Good amount of DPS here. Psycon obviously being used on the Aversa Assassin, combined with a Neuro Gauntlet. Mm, now seems to have forgotten about him. Bio Meltdown? Yeah. Suicide. <laughs> what is going on? I don't know what he's watching there. That was very weird. I mean, it's going to be a Land Raider Redeemer. Let's see what it can do. It obviously needs to avoid the bottom of Razorback. That it can't do anything to it. In theory, if the bottom of the Razorback gets close enough... Oh my god. Seraph! Come on. He didn't even activate the Retreat Beacon on his Land Raider Redeemer, so... It is now currently unsupported, but there's, the only AV is the bottom of Razorback, so... Should be fine. But yeah, as I'm saying, the bottom of Razorback outranges the Multi-Melter on top of that Land Raider Redeemer, so as long as the Vodimer Razorback keeps kiting, it should be fine. And you can see Vodimer Razorback, not renowned for having incredible burst DPS, but its actual DPS is really good. Really good. And this is just one Vodimer Razorback. It is slowly melting this Land Raider Redeemer, which is just charging forward, which is silly, because the Land Raider Redeemer can't escape. It's slower than a Vodimer Razorback, and very soon, there's going to be a second bottom of Razorback as well. This is... This is not good. I think Seraph is screwed. Do we at least have missile attacks coming? No, we don't. Oh, okay, he's running top. He's just going for the VP game. This Land Raider Redeemer right now is a stall. It's just a stall play. Caps the bottom. Caps the top. He's got the 50% extra capping speed on the top. Really, something must get on the cap right now, the Grey Knight Librarian is, yeah, he's, he's fine. He's getting the decap. It's fine. As long as he got on that cap, whilst he had more than seven VPs, he has enough time to decap it. So, he can always get the decap. Doesn't matter if Seraph forced him off. Seraph has got no army right now, so obviously the IST can now just move in, cap the top, and that is going to be GG in favour of Versa Assassin, and that is what you get, Seraph, for trying to meme on my boy with Land Raider Redeemers. I mean... Come on.
The thing is, if you've actually got a close game and, and it's just going on and on and on, one of these 30 minute games where you actually both could field a super unit, the Land Raider Redeemer in that instance is extremely powerful and can just be a, an actual game ender. But that assumes that you have a balanced composition to start with, which Seraph didn't there. He had no anti-vehicle. He even made it worse by going for vanguards and then you lose out on the melter bomb. So yeah, he's just trying to meme and he's making the Land Raider Redeemer look bad, but it isn't that bad. And I'm sure any of you guys that have played 3v3s free know it isn't that bad. But there you go. Just desserts for Seraph. What a feg. Hope you did enjoy. Topid signing out.